right in the early morning hours, and I have to make sure I get this correct, at the St. Clair Broiler Cafe in St. Paul. That's correct. So now, why do you write there? First of all, in the early morning hours, and why don't you write at home or in an office? Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you why I don't write at home. At home, I'm responsible for the environment. So if someone knocks on the door, if the telephone rings, I have to respond. I, you know, if I walk by the kitchen and, and there were dishes to be done in the sink, I go, hmm, maybe I should stop writing for a while and do the dishes. I've actually had this experience, honestly. I'm sitting in my house on a beautiful winter day, the house to myself, the sun is outside, it's sparkling off the snow. It's the, exactly the kind of environment you think a writer would want mm -hmm. to be inspired. Right. And what am I doing? I'm sitting there going, hmm, shouldn't the furnace have come on by now? <laughs> so writing at home just doesn't work for me. When I'm in a coffee shop and the waitress drops a tray of dishes, big deal. It's not my responsibility. Uh -huh. All of the noise that's going on really becomes white noise that allows me to sink myself down deeply into the imagining uh, of whatever I need to, to do for the writing. That writing in a coffee shop began many, many years ago when uh, my wife and I, Diane, and I moved to the Twin Cities and she went to law school. I really knew absolutely I wanted to be a writer, but I was the guy who was also responsible for keeping a roof over head and food on the table. So I had to come up with a way if I was going to meet those responsibilities and become a writer to do that. We were living a block from the St. Clair Royal, which opened its doors at 6 a.m. So I made a deal with my wife. If she would get the kids ready to go off to school and allow me to go write um, and then go to work, when I got home from work, I would be family man to the max. So I began showing up the broiler at 6 a.m. with my notebook in hand. Um, I would sit down, open my notebook, they'd pour me my coffee, I'd pick up my pen, and I'd write for this was in the 90s, right? This, this was before like the Starbucks phenomenon had happened of going to coffee shops to write. Right? Yeah, this is actually earlier than that. Even. Okay. <laughs> We're talking mid-80s here. Okay. I've been writing at coffee shops a long, a long time. time. <laughs> um, and I would write for an hour and 15 minutes. The bus would come and pick me up out in front of the boiler and take me to work. And I did that uh, day in and day out. Really, I was writing seven days a week. And, uh, and so it helped me establish the, the pattern of the writing the process. Of it helped me establish the discipline that I think is absolutely necessary to any artist. I don't care whether you're a writer or a visual artist or a dancer or what. You have to do the work daily, I think. But you know, here's something else that it did for me that, that I didn't realize until very much later. After the fact, when I looked back, I realized that if I wrote every day, I was feeding something in me that needed to be fed. And that gave me the energy then to go out into the world and, and do whatever I had to do to keep a roof over head and food on the table because I'd already taken care of myself mm -hmm. artistically. Um, writing had become for me, and still is, primarily the way that I center myself in every day and, and create the energy to go out and be the world. So you're still writing seven days a week, even today? I uh, didn't write but today. Not today, not today, <laughs> today. Mm -hmm. even it's, it's a challenge to write on the road. Right. Do attempt it. The first thing I do when I check into a hotel is figure out where I can go in the morning to get coffee and mm -hmm. to write. So I still attempt to keep that connection with the writing process itself. Occasionally it, it falters, but but you know if I do that, if that's a part of the discipline, then I'm aware of it when it doesn't happen. It's the exception. Now for a long time you did not identify the coffee shop, and then finally you did. Was there a reason for that? Because the, for a long time there. And your bio, it was a, a coffee shop that prefers to be unnamed. Well, it, actually, that's how, it, how it, I refer to it on my website now. For, for anyone who reads my books, right up front in the acknowledgement right. of, uh, of every book uh, is the, the final acknowledgement is to the St. Clair Royal, a wonderful place to write. Um, so anybody who reads the books uh, knows that I write at the Broiler. And the problem with the Broiler is it, it began to get, I began to be so identified with the Broiler. We've done television interviews there, and radio interviews, and print media interviews at the broiler, so that it was getting to a point where I was really having a lot of people stop by the broiler when I was there in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, most of them were very respectful, but it, was, it began to be, get quite a, uh, to be quite an interruption. Consequently, um, I often will sneak off site and write somewhere else mm -hmm. instead. <laughs> 
at a location not to be revealed. Thank you very much. I play by not to be revealed. Did you have a picture of the um, coffee shop on your website? I do. Yeah, okay. I do. Make sure we get a link out to that as well. Um, do you write from an outline? Do you, do you outline madly in advance, or do you have some idea where the story is going? What do you do? Typically speaking, I outline significantly. This is basically how the process works. An idea will come to me, and usually I try to open myself up to it before I've completed whatever project I'm working on. Um, and, and almost always that will happen. Some compelling idea will, will kind of hook itself into my brain. And while I'm completing my current project, I leave myself open to thinking about what's going to come next. And around that, that uh, before that idea, events begin to suggest themselves in chronology and characters and motivations, uh, a, a story arc, uh, the emotion that I want to leave readers with. And, and, and eventually, all of that comes together in my head in the full story. I know how it begins. I know how it ends. I know who did what to whom and why. Um, and once my current project is finished, I'll actually sit down and outline chapter by chapter for the next book. And once that's done, then I sit down and I begin the writing of it. And pretty much that's how probably all but two or three of the books have been done. It's a very comfortable process. Yeah, it's where you're comfortable at. There's some people that say that it's, you know, it's to outline or not to outline. Can you work without the outline? What can you do? And some people have said if they tried it without, they just can't make it through. And then there are others that just sit down and it's not going to happen if there's an outline. Do you know, I have done books without 